Welcome to part three of this series on finding export customers. You have the country identified as an export market for your product from the first week. We did that research. You created the MOQ FOB for the customer in the second week. Uh, the MOQ FOB is passive marketing. Now we get into active marketing going straight at the customer. My name is John Spires and you can learn more about me on my website johnspires.com and I am John Wiley Spires, not to be confused with the more famous, far more famous accordion play, player out of the UK. Uh, now, going after uh, the actual buyer, the name of somebody overseas that will buy your product from you, is probably the most uh, time consuming part. It's not uh, terribly time consuming, it's just the most of all this process. The, uh, the, uh, time-consuming part. But let's say we are going after um, uh, birch syrup drinks or something exotic and we've done research on that. It's identified France as the best place in the world. So what we want to do is we want to head to, uh, we want to Google uh, French uh, food trade shows and we want to see the names of French, uh, French food trade shows. Now what was going on here while we're doing this is um, if our target country happens to be France as we see from our earlier um, research and uh, we know there are uh, trade shows in France and if we track down French companies that show at French trade shows well we know that they are domestic French companies the ones that happen to import products from around the world to sell in France, well then there's a target customer of ours. It's a French company that imports into France and distributes in France and has customers in France and so that's who we want to contact. So as we go through this list, as you can see there's a whole bunch here, so we'll just pick the first one, Cial. Um, that is actually a, a famous uh, trade show. And now all trade shows, or the legitimate ones, will give you a list of exhibitors and there it is front and center exhibitors list they won't give you the names of the buyers who show up at the show but you don't want those anyway you want an exhibitor at this show uh, who happens to be an importer so you can approach them about importing your product from the United States and selling it in France at French trade shows as well whatever it is so as we take a look at uh, the exhibitors list uh, we'll go down the list of companies that are exhibiting at the show and there are 1,562 exhibitors so far for this show. There's probably, for the 2014 show, there's probably people signing up all the time, so there'll be new ones all the time. But we got, uh, we're looking for drinks, but what we got here is United Kingdom, obviously a meat company, Lithuania, Netherlands, Switzerland, we don't care about those. Oh, here's one, AB Technologies Alimentaire. So that doesn't sound promising. Technologies? Food technologies? Uh, it's probably some sort of um, a food processing company or something, but let's take a look at what they got. Uh, oh, dairy products, eggs. We're not interested in that, so let's go back to the list. And you go through this, and look, we're just looking at the A's here. Uh, France, uh, uh, Argence, Aquitaine, Promotion. So that's a trade promotion board. We don't want that. We want actual companies. Abia. Uh, I wonder what that is. Ah, be ah. So as you see, this, this is going to take some time to go through here and find all these companies. And uh, I'm not sure what ah, be ah is. But um, uh, they're on the Rue Maurice La Lanou. And that's in France. And they're in organizations. Oh, well, this is some sort of organization. So, um, no, we want customers. We want people that are actually producing goods. So, um, I'm going to skip ahead here to one I already found um, just to save time. But that was to give you a little bit of flavor of, of just wading through a, a list to find uh, the names of uh, potential customers. Now this one is still in the A's. Remember we got all the, all the way through the Z's. It's called Agro A. And it is in Rue du Petit Florentine uh, Plateau Fofo, wherever that is. And it gives you a, 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 a URL there uh, for you to follow up on. So what do we got here? Ooh, kombuchas. Well this is a company that sells juices. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so there it is in French. Um, let's click on things and see what we can find out here. Uh, Francaise. Okay, what do we got here? Sites. 
Uh, okay, there it is. Agroa sells all sorts of juices and such. So what happens is you look through here and you want to find uh, the name of, um, of uh, uh, decision makers here. And I don't read French, so that's video, that's belly, that's kombucha, that's products. Um, and I don't know what all this says, but uh, they're talking about the CL show. Um, and then it gives me an opportunity to to talk to people, but um, I don't know. It's not uh, um, it's not helping there. Oh, there's a contact. Enjoy fresh fruits. Uh, um, support Joomla. I you know this one is um, um, so so as far as. Um, a, a company but uh, you might want to look at other places to find if that one is a good one to um. also I could Google this uh, Google translate this and find out all of the um, um, what all this says in English which is easy enough but let me take a look at another one I'm going to go down the list I mean that one looked pretty good but let's go down this list too and I as I went down the list more I found this company and I said ah oh, well very good um, this one has a fr an English version. It's a French company. They do oil and vinegars. Um, and this was off that CLSIAL list as well. They do vinegar syrups. So this one may be a good one to, to contact. And as you, you um, go through, um, you try to find out what you can about the company. And then it's got um, the name of Marie... Nirac, a Parisian. So now we got a name. Her husband, Jean Noel Pirac, I suppose. And that's uh, places where they sell the product. Um, and what I want to do is home. I want to find an address to contact where I can write them. And that's hard to do. Ooh, what we got here? Contact. Uh, there we go. There's an address. So now we got a name. We got an address. We got good good things to, to start with. And so now we go for the approach. Now the approach will be a uh, a letter. We're not going to go after um, uh, emails to these people. That's not nice. But remember, what we did first was some research. We found out, and this one has to be onions, and we found out that the sales of onions are growing to, to Canada, Japan, wherever country in the world that we're talking about here. And uh, uh, in one of the earlier uh, presentations, we actually looked at, uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, we looked at pecans. And then we found out that Hong Kong was the number one market for pecans. If we did birch syrups, we'd have a report like this for birch syrups. So what we start off with in, in um, the first section was to find uh, the country that we're going after. And, and if you recall, we took a look and we saw that um, that the, 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 the sales of this product to Hong Kong were this in the dollars, that the, the sales were accelerating. I'm not getting this to behave here. Uh, if you look at this line here, it's accelerating um, uh, the increase in sales to Hong Kong. We've got the percentage of the world total going to Hong Kong, and we've got the average price paid. So we have all sorts of information to work with here regarding um, this, uh, uh, this topic, this item that we're exporting. We did that in the earlier, um, in the earlier uh, sessions. So um, how we start all this is with a, um, a letter. And this is a piece of paper uh, going out. Um, I actually buy some very nice paper, uh, 50 cents a sheet. It's blank, um, but I get it at, a, at an upscale uh, specialty uh, store, specialty stationery store. It's very nice paper, and I just, uh, but I don't have it printed. Um, this cost me 50 cents a sheet for the for the letterhead, and it cost me 50 cents each on the envelope. They're very nice envelopes. Now, uh, I simply set up my word processor to have one font, uh, this font here, for um, the purposes of um, 
that the header and then in the body I type the letter in in a another font and this one is a is a typewriter font uh, the envelope I, I uh, and then when I've written my letter and I'll show you elements of a letter in a, in a, in a second here but I've written the letter then I just print it out so it looks like it's very nice letterhead and here I also have um, the envelope and I couldn't quite get the envelope to print along here like I wanted to I could only get it to print here with my with my printer and all that kind of stuff but I don't care that's kind of kind of classy there like that and then I would of course put the address down here and then type it in but um, uh, then of course at the bottom I um, sign it in blue ink the letter again you'll be taking a look at this letter uh, there I have all my address and phone number all that and then just kind of to be classy here what I do is I is I just put in um, uh, Seattle at the bottom I don't know if you can see that there but uh, 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 so I don't know that you can do what you want but that's what I do so that's uh, that's what those uh, letters look like and then the next thing we want to do is look at the pitch letter itself the elements thereof and uh, as we wait for that to open up here opening and here it comes there it is okay so what I have here is a pitch letter and I'm gonna roll it up here so you see the whole thing so your own name up there and you see as it comes up it's it's in the header and I do that in one font and then I type the letter in a in a typewriter font mr. target customer especially specialties and this is we we, gra we grab this off that uh, trade show website the exact dress and and don't forget the uh, the date if people write a letter and forget a date again this is a piece of paper uh, it's run through your word process but it looks like it's typed out we're not really fooling anybody here they know that's going on um, uh, and we have all the elements of a real live old-fashioned letter sending out a thousand emails is a waste of time you're not going to get any response and it's not professional anyway so an actual piece of paper in an envelope going to somebody overseas so there's the date and then uh, regarding uh, the old subject line in an email but that is pulled off the old-fashioned letter so dear mister customer now this you hit them with numbers give them a reason uh, to keep reading and tell them how they're gonna make money more money reading this letter than they will make uh, doing anything else so if you take a minute to review the enclosed spreadsheet on pecan exports to the USA from the USA to Hong Kong you'll note the pace is accelerating over the last 10 years with a nearly 200 percent increase 2013 year over year uh, 2012 and then I cite the lines from that from that uh, um, from that spreadsheet and you can include this spreadsheet so they can look at it themselves they look at the Hong Kong market share in line 12 and the prices paid per kilo by Hong Kong imports line 13 US ITC provides this raw data only you and I have this analysis now I'm telling you what's going on in this letter yeah I have to use uh, the formal business letter layout one font for the letterhead, uh, letterhead another for the content plain paper excellent quality 50 cents a sheet there you go I run it through my laser printer and then you use the word you within the first three words there it is right there it's the second word if it has to be outside the first three words rewrite the letter if if you don't have you in the first three words don't send the letter you're wasting your time you're probably talking about yourself nobody wants to hear about you they want to they want to know when they read this letter how they're gonna make money before before this letter finishes so um, get it right uh, then talk money immediately and then fr uh, from the research because people say uh, who cares so what uh, who cares about pecans well they do because they're in the business and then uh, 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 excuse me who says and so what so what is is that there's a, a growing uh, market in pecans and they should be in, get involved in it and then who says I don't say this is the United States International Trade Commission that's saying so um, that's what people are thinking when they're reading that first paragraph they're thinking who says so what um, and you got to tell them that so uh, I'm talking money immediately that's what it matters to them I'm talking from the research that's who's talking not me the United States International Trade Commission and then I tell them what they get that no one else has and that's Joe Girard's um, sales um, tactic is is and that's what I'm saying the US ITC provides the raw data and only you and I have seen this analysis so there's just us uh, for my part I've included an MOQ FOB uh, offer now remember you created that last week for your consideration so they're getting this data and they're getting the MOQ FOB in this um, 
This allows you to test the product. You know, so what? Why, why do I want MOQ? Why do I want this research? This allows you to test the market in your market, uh, test the product in your market the least with minimal risk while making news, enhancing your image, and growing your business. Well, that's okay. Uh, we've researched your company online. Tell them where you got their name. They want to know that. We've researched your company online. I'd like to work with you. We stand ready to support your efforts to build new and more market in Hong Kong with all the resources we can draw on here. Please feel free to contact me at any time of the numbers. Now, there's an alternative closing here, and this is uh, Ogilvy talks about this uh, in his book uh, Ogilvy on Advertising, where you say, "I will call you in you know three weeks out because this has got to go in the mail. It's got to get delivered to them. It's got to be get read. Give, but, but give them a specific time. So I will call you on at this time in this place to discuss this opportunity with you. Now you got to tell them when you're going to call them in their time, not your time." Uh, you know, if this is 12 hours away, 12 time zones away, well, you you, you got to set it in their time so they don't have to think it through. You worry about making sure you call it the right time. I look forward to your kind of reply. If you, if you use this alternative closing, you would not use this. You would just go after them. So sign it in blue ink. Make sure you have your name. Put in the attachments, which is the spreadsheet and the MOQ. And then again in the footer, there is the... Um, uh, your address, USA. Make sure you got the USA on there, and the envelope as well says USA. Email, phone, Skype, whatever, whatever contact means you have there. So there's the letter going out um, to these people. Uh, it is, uh, um, uh, as I said, the letter going out. It's direct. And then uh, after that letter goes out, what you're probably going to find is in time people are replying. For example, here's a reply on an email. This letter went out April 5, and here's the email back. And that's what they do. They're not going to send a letter back. Um, they know that you're interested. They know you got an email address, and they'll reply by email, which is fine. But make sure your letter going to them is a piece of paper. Don't waste time sending out emails to start to introduce yourself. So, dear Mr. Spires, I have recently received your letter, and it goes on down this. Now, I've taken out anything that identifies this customer because I, I don't have the right to use his letter to me, and so you can't tell who this is. But this is the, the type of letter response you get. Uh, so the price is eliminated, the price arrangement locked in for 90 days. I'm learning about the market by his reply, but at any rate, he wants to talk more. That's great. I want to talk more too. And here is another reply. Um, this this uh, went out about, I think, April 25, and I got this back May 9. So, uh, dear Mr. Spires, uh, we are most delighted to hear from you keen to come into business opportunity with us. Now, these are two different companies. This company is um, um, one style of distribution, and this is another style of distribution. I, I, again, I don't want to get into too much detail, but as I talk to different people, different styles of uh, distribution, I can easily be selling to two different companies inside Hong Kong and hitting two different two different markets, or France, or wherever else in the world, or Argentina, wherever we're talking about in the world. So most delighted to hear that you are keen to come into business with us as you appreciate Hong Kong's relatively competitive market at the outlay supplies largely distributed here. So um, I'm getting things that I don't quite understand what they're saying. I do understand that they want a good bargain. Um, so I'm going re to reply to that. And I'm going to ask them more questions. And they're they're really interested in this three-party, three, three uh, party, uh, third party logistics carrier to match. Well, I, again, as I said in the, the first lesson, the freight forwarders are extremely critical to this process. And here we have it again. Um, the buyer is really interested in, in, in what we've got in the way of resources of 3P, 3PL. And, they're, and again, both of these people are interested in the less than container load. Um, and both of these are chill less than container load. So um, this, uh, those are the kinds of re uh, responses. Now, if you get no responses, um, you know, I, I send out 12 letters and I get back three or four responses. There's some I don't get responses to. So this is uh, uh, compliments of uh, Martin out of Thailand, and he found it on a website. But I, I think this is pretty good, um, in which uh, he sends an email. If nobody's responded to him in a month or so, and assuming that you just left it up to them to contact you, uh, this one's going to somebody named Frank. Hey, Frank, I know you're busy. Uh, this is an email going out there. Just hit reply and give me a one, two, or three. One, not interested in your Hong Kong market project or whatever your pitch was. Number two, we're not we're interested, but it's not a good time, right? Reach out in a month again in a month. Number three, I'm interested. Let's let's, let's talk. So they just hit the reply button in one, two, or three, and there you go. Now in this one, I also added uh, a link to uh, this was uh, somebody uh, re relating to wine. Uh, here's a link. 
uh, to a story on a, a Hong Kong Trade Development Council on wine market today in Hong Kong that might just get them more interested by this letter. But anyway, if and when they reply, they hit one, two, or three, or not at all, which means forget it, move on to somebody else. Um, people are busy. And they, they, even if they've got a letter, they may not have the time to reply. Um, so at which point you, you send this in as an email. And you don't have to say, like, obviously don't send this as a letter. Send this as an email. And they either reply. If they don't reply, take them off your list. Ignore them. They're not interested. But there's a chance that they'll give you a two or three, which gives you uh, permission to follow up. So um, that's what you do with people that are um, non-responsive. All right, well, now the next thing here that I want to go into um, with all of this is back to the um, back to our friends the uh, the um, Google and uh, as I said we're sending out actual letters and the envelope is going to have an actual stamp on it uh, you know, I say this, and people just, for whatever reason, they don't hear it. They go ahead and they send out emails, and they'll they'll email me or, or me and ask you say, you know, I sent out a hundred emails and no one responded. Well, of course they didn't respond. I told you, don't send out emails. But anyway, here's a lovely stamp. The United States Postal Service is on your side, um, and there is a stamp um, for um, that's international. So you put that stamp on. I think it's a dollar fifteen now. Uh, you put that stamp on there. It's going to go anywhere in the world, pretty much anywhere in the world, for a buck fifteen on an envelope. And I think you can put up to four sheets of paper in an envelope, and you're below the first half ounce or whatever the, the, this dollar fifteen covers so four sheets is easy uh, on an envelope including an envelope and then if you're sh uh, doing this around the holidays well guess what they got a version of that for the holidays huh you like that and then uh, um, you may also like the fact that I mean if there's a oh and uh, uh, another terrible economic downturn there the Postal Service has uh, uh, the economic downturn stamp at uh, international sales and I'll show you that one right there it's just you know the end of the world uh, oh no actually it is just the global surface sea temperatures but when I said that it looks like global conflagration or something anyway so um, that could be an interesting stamp as well so as I said even the postal service there is out to help you um, and we have uh, stamps there. Now, a, a word to, to people who are not actually producing goods that are actually just agents. Uh, if you're a principal, you have your own products and you're offering those for sale around the world, and that's wonderful. Uh, if you're working as an agent, uh, your first letters are going to, um, they can be to, to customers overseas, to line up customers. There's nothing wrong with, with getting people interested. You notice both of those replies, my letters were not actually sales letters, they were approach letters. The sales process, as you know from week two, is far more complicated but there were approach letters and and they uh, 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 elicited replies uh, so you, you can start getting approaching uh, uh, buyers overseas and at the same time if you are just working as an agent and you're not a principal and you don't actually have anything to sell yet well you can approach customers overseas and then start looking as you get a better idea of what they're looking for start looking for supplies in the United States and you'd write a letter in this instance too when you're talking to uh, potential um, uh, suppliers what you want to do is find out um, who uh, does not want to export themselves any company that's willing to export themselves uh, um, well let me back up here any buyer in the world will try to go around an agent directly any supplier willing to sell uh, uh, export will hook up with any buyer that's looking to go directly and they'll cut you out of the deal. So what you're actually looking for is people who tell you they will not, under any circumstances, export. Those are the ones you want to represent. Why? Because when you pr uh, make a proposal to people overseas and you tell them where you're getting the goods and those buyers overseas try to go around you, they go around you and they find out there's just no way they can buy direct. The only way to get the product is through you. So um, that's why you want to work with as an agent with people who refuse to export. And there's plenty of people who do export. So your opening question as an agent to a potential um, supply of product that you would represent overseas is to ask them, do 
you have an export program? Just ask them directly, a yes or no. Usually the answer, of course, is no. And then you try to sell them on the idea. If they say, yes, we'd love to develop our own, well, then say, well, we'll send them to me and I'll show them how. Um, but they, they're not good for you because they'll go around you eventually, and it's, that's only rational. But there are plenty. There are countless companies that are just not interested under any circumstance, even if you show them it can be done, uh, just not interested in doing it. So that's where you come in because they won't. They do have customers overseas, but they... Um, uh, but they won't ever export themselves. Well, very good. That's, that's, that's yours. Now, another thing to ask after asking, do you have an export program um, of, of somebody who actually makes things, is to ask a second question, and that is, what do you do with your export inquiries? And they, they'll say, what? We don't get any inquiries from export. Well, I'll tell you, between you and me, yes, they do. Um, everybody's getting them. Uh, companies all over the world are constantly asking. Some of them are scams, but some are legit. And say, well, um, ask around. Can I call you in a couple of days after you ask around the receptionist or whoever else opens the mail or reads the emails and all that kind of stuff? Because if, if you're not going to work on them, I would like to. And maybe it can be some extra business. And then if you're not going to export, you can. I, I'm an agent that will export and then selling to me. Uh, Mr. or Mrs. Producer of a good food product in the United States. Selling to me will be just another domestic sale to you. And the fact that I'm turning around selling it overseas is no sweat off your back because you don't want to export and I'm just getting you more business. So that's in, in a nutshell and in chapter 8 of my book, How Small Business Trade Worldwide, I go into more detail on that. But this that's, that's in essence it. So what we're doing here is we are taking the information we got um, in the first week on the um, world trade data, and then we're going on the um, um, second week with the MLQ FOB that we created, and then here in the third week we're going directly to customers who should be buying from us. And again, I want to say something: in a country like France, we only go after 12 because there's only probably two or three that should be buying us in the entire country. That's all the customer customers we need in France to get all of France customers because they will go after, they will import and wholesale and distribute all over France. So, and you know, maybe three. So we contact 12, we get down to three, and then we went down to one, and we get one real good customer in France, and a good one in Germany, and then a good one in Argentina, and that's how we build market worldwide, country after country. Um, but it gets down to these letters and it gets down to down to the trade shows. Okay, so then uh, the uh, session four in these this series of four will be on those trade shows and working them and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's it for this one. Again, I am John Spires, and you can go to my website, johnspires.com, and find me. And uh, if you um, are looking for online classes. I also own a, uh, a little company here called Seattle Teachers College. It has all sorts of, uh, of um, classes on all sorts of, um, on all sorts of fields uh, for your edification. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and you see on the, on the uh, Chiron down there, uh, my email. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And I uh, look forward to hearing from you. And I'd love to hear how you're proceeding on exporting food from the United States or any country in the world uh, where you're building an export business. Thank you much. Bye-bye.